When you're building a set of stairs, it's all about the risers, the stringers, the horses, depending on where you're at, what you may call them. There are probably other names for these things that I've never heard of and wouldn't understand if you told me. But in general, this is where the rubber meets the road. Because if this shape isn't right, your stairs either don't work, are uncomfortable, or they don't pass the inspection. Worse, if they're not right, they could fall down. If you're using dimensional lumber, that is boards that are cut out of a log, you're stuck working with the characteristics, the defects, the, you know, what Mother Nature put into that log is going to be what Mother Nature put into your stringers. And you've got to pay attention when you pick out the boards, and you've really got to pay attention when you cut out your horses. Let me show you some of the defects in these boards that I have to work with if, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and use them. The first defect that I want to show you is in my pattern. This is the piece that's cut pretty darn nice. I mean, when I put a level on here, it's level. When I put a, le a level on the front, it's plumb. That's what you want. Not only that, but I'm going to have a nice even rise from the bottom riser all the way to the top. But you see that knot? Can you see that knot? Of course you can see that knot. That creates a space in that board that effectively reduces the width of this 2x12 down to about a half an inch there on the bottom, on the tension side, right where you don't want it reduced. When you consider that the width is already reduced by the inside of cutting out these notches, there's just not a lot of material left there in that board. Doesn't matter in this case because I'm using this piece against the wall. It's going to be nailed or screwed at every single stud, so this is in fact not going to be spanning at all. It's going to be supported all the way up and down. That's one of the things you have to think about when you're laying out your horses, your stringers, on your boards. Try to slide your pattern back and forth to where whatever defect there is, and there will be defects, is taken care of in the way that you put your stairs together. So this board is the second half of the 18 footer that I cut the pattern out of. And right off the bat, it's got a nasty check or split at the end. See that? That's probably just a function of it having been in the stack for a long time. But that means that I cannot use the end of this board to lay out a set of stringers because it'll break right off. That's defect number one. Defect number two is this knot. You see that thing? That is sort of a spike knot, wannabe. That is, it comes in from the edge. It shows up on both sides, but mostly on this side. And that knot reduces the width of this 2x12 down to 7 inches. So I've got to decide whether I use this board on the other side of the stair up against the wall or maybe I can cut that knot out with the notches that are going to disappear anyhow as I lay out these stairs and see how everything sort of lines up. Let's see how that goes. This piece is long enough that it's pretty easy to get away from that check at the end. I'm just going to put the pattern on here, slide it down about as close as I can to the other end which has no check at all. It was in the middle of the longer board so it's sound. We are a foot away from the end of that split now. That's good. And I see that if I just move this pattern back about four inches, I can cut out that entire knot when I cut out riser number one, two, three, four, five. That'll go away with the firewood, right? So that takes care of two defects in one shot. It's important to figure out where you're going to put your pattern on your rough chunk. This next piece looks good, right? I mean, it's a nice, smooth face. The knots are not terrible. I mean, I've got a pretty good knot right here. But I see a little bit of the heart center on that end. Let's have a closer look at what that hat does to the other side of this board. So this board is pretty nice, but when I look close, I can see that the heart center, or the pith, was kind of cut out, and then it disappears, and then it reappears right here, and it disappears, and it's back, and it disappears, and it's back, and that makes me suspicious. So it's important that you look at both sides of the board. Okay, and now we know the tail. This heart center continues all the way up and down the board. You've got some nastiness right there, and you've got a big ugly check that comes in to intersect the heart center 
there on that end. This board has some problems. Let's see if we can get the jack, the, the stringer on there in such a way that the problems don't actually cause a big problem years from now. Since this is the side that shows all the problems, this is the side I'm looking at when I put my pattern on here. Now the first thing I'm looking at is like the last board that I worked on, and that is getting away from the big check down at the end. So if I slide it all the way down here, yeah, we've got lots of good material there. We're quite a ways away from this check, although I'll bet that this toe is still gonna break off. But what I really wanna know is, is this gonna leave that heart center down inside the portion that acts as a board, or up inside the portion where the, all of these toes are gonna wanna chip off? So let me mark a couple here and just see where things end up. Okay, I like that. It puts the pith or the heart down inside the board where it's not going to be able to just split off corner to corner to corner, but rather is going to be part of the compression side of the stringer that is kind of working as people are walking up and down the stairs. So. I think this is gonna work fine. I'll lay it out. So you can see that this defect, which is going to be a split over time, is not going to be breaking across the corners of the stringer. It's gonna be back in here where it doesn't help anything, but it doesn't really wreck anything either. This check is gonna be cut away and probably will be able to keep the nose of this bottom riser intact. This third one is the same thing, only different and worse, actually. The heart center in this one is exactly at the apex, at the intersection of the horizontal and vertical faces. It's either that, or if I flip the pattern over, it happens with about ah, two thirds of the nose up in the air where it could break off. So I'm gonna roll the dice and run this heart center right down that intersection and we'll see what happens. I don't like it, but sometimes you just gotta swallow hard and keep moving. So here's an example of exactly what I was talking about with the checks coming in from the end and the heart center making a weak spot. The nose of this bottom riser just dropped right off. Now it fits, let me get this back on here, it fits nicely, right? I mean, it's a precise fit, but it's hard to put it back precisely there. Now I should use Elmer's or Tight Bond or something wood glue, but I'm not going to. I've got this PL400, it's what I'm gluing the whole set together with, I'm going to use that. But what I am going to do is use some screws, some uh, pilot holes, and the glue to cinch this thing right back down where it goes. And when it's on the inside of this step, the tread and the face is going to also reinforce its strength, I hope. This illustrates beautifully why I like to put the cleat or the ledger or the tow board under a set of stairs at the back rather than out at the front. I mean, there have been a lot of comments on my other stair videos that, yeah, that ledger should have been out at the front to keep those stairs from sliding. And you're right on a set of stairs that are out on a deck or something where they're not supported on both sides by a wall. I'll talk more about that later when I put this in place so you can see it. But if I had a notch right here to receive a two by four um, ledger, it would have broken off easier and screwed together less effectively. All four of the horses are cut. The one where the end broke off, I've got put over against the wall. I've got the three quarter inch spacers between the horses at the sides and the framing so that the drywall will slide down in there. 
I'm going to nail these to the wall, making sure I have the 6 and 13 16 rise plus an inch right here, 7 and 13 16 Keep in mind, always keep in mind, the tread is subtracted from whatever you've got, I mean, all the time. So we're looking for 7 and 13 16 shot to the wall. Same thing on this side, check for level. I know it's going to be level, and then full speed ahead. If you look up perfect in the dictionary, you're going to see a picture of a level that reads just like that. So this is the board I'm going to use for the cleat, the ledger down at the floor. It's red cedar, it's rot resistant. For all the good it needs to do, it will certainly do it. So you saw me use this dull chisel to cut out the inside corner when I was cutting these stringers out. And it's easy to let one's lip curl when a wood chisel comes out in a situation like that. And you may have thought, well, why didn't he use a jigsaw or a handsaw or a fine saw or, you know, a saw? And the answer is because if you look right here, you can see that these faces are ripped just a little narrow. There's clearance. The last thing you want is to be tangled up with a face that's too wide holding you up above the grade of the tread. And for that reason, it works just as well to chisel out any leftover material in the corner as to cut it out. Because, in fact, too deep in a case like this is good. So this is the best chance to demonstrate so you can really see what it means and why you subtract the tread width from the bottom riser. The standard rise on this set of steps is 6 and 13 sixteenths inches. That goes in nice and even, more or less, to the 102 inch total rise from the bottom to the top. But each one of the treads that I'm going to be putting on next is one inch thick. That means that this bottom riser has had one inch subtracted from this distance. That means that this face board is five and thirteen sixteenths instead of six and thirteen sixteenths. And it goes in like this. Before I nail this on here, let me just point out that this is the corner that broke off when I was cutting it. It's glued and screwed and it's just about to be reinforced once again and buried forever. Like that. So we've had a design change here this morning, which builds in a situation where I need to cut the nosings off of these treads. We were gonna leave a nose out and just leave it exposed, and we've decided, no, carpet all the way down, but it's a commercial grade glue on carpet and we're not going to try to have a bull nose hanging over the top of the each progressive step. Which means that I've got to rip the bull nose off of here to about 11 and a 16th or so. Don't have a table saw on the job, but I do have all these nice straight pieces of material. Here's a trick which I forgot when I did this in an earlier video and was reminded of in the comments and it works really good. Now a skill saw is an inch and a half from here to the blade and it's three and change let's see how much is it coming the other way I want to say it's three and a half but that may just be camera fever yeah no it's three and a half we're three and a half from here to the blade an inch and a half from there to the blade and that is oh so handy but it's easy to get lost in the math do I come over this far and then plus an inch and a half and which side of the no forget that here's what you do you start your cut And then you bring your straight edge over and you clamp it in contact with that edge of the saw.
takes all the guesswork out of where to put your straight edge before you make a nice long rip. Well, the bottom flight's in. Everything's as it should be. And as it turns out, the top flight is exactly the same layout. 6 and 13 16 inch rise, 11 inch run. Now I laid the other one out off camera, just using a square with no square gauge sets, nothing. I just laid it out old school and went slow and easy and enjoyed the afternoon. But I'm going to show you a couple of ways to sort of speed up stair layout and rafter layout with appliances, if you would like, that attach to a framing square. First challenge is to get to the bottom of this old gate mouth bag and see if I've still got stair gauge sets down in there somewhere. We'll see how that goes. So there could be long and passionate debate, I'm sure, about what sort of a jig should be applied to a framing square in order to get consistent repeated marks. You know, for rafters, for stairs, for whatever else you might be using your square for, it's nice to have stops, to have a way to just put the square up against a piece and make your mark. Now, for most of my adult life, I believed and assumed and couldn't imagine that stair gauge sets wouldn't be, you know, the best solution. A stair gauge set slips over the tongue and the body of a framing square, a steel square, and then you can slide it up and down and tighten it up at the point. So let's do this. The first thing I like to do when I'm laying out a set of stairs is mark on the square with my tape because sometimes square markings are obscured, so now I have a lead mark there at 6 and 13, and one here at 11, which is accurate, actually. And then the best bet is to put the square on the work. Make sure you're right where it needs to be. And then I take the stair gauge set, and I just slip it on the square, run it up until it contacts the board, and tighten it down. That's very quick. And in a lot of cases, it's as good as it needs to be. I mean, you can make a repetitive mark with that, you know, on and on, right down the board. But there's a couple of problems with this. And the first is, when you get to the end of the board and the, one of the stair gauge sets is hanging out into space, it becomes useless. And the second is, in the modern world where so many boards have wane, that is that tapered edge where the bark was occupying the space, the stair gauge set doesn't make contact with the edge of the board, or it'll fall into a knot. Or if there's a blemish or an imperfection on the edge of the board, it registers with your stair gauge set and you become inaccurate. Whereas, this old school solution, and Steve made this, by the way, out of southern yellow pine, entirely with hand tools, did I mention that the man is a zealot? Now there's nothing wrong with zealots. The world has to have some zealots, as long as the zeal is tempered with knowledge, right? And Steve has zeal and knowledge in just about the right proportions. But Steve, I gotta tell you, the relief you put in here for me is not quite enough, and the square binds and it doesn't slide around, and so I may take that apart and adjust your beautiful innovation. But I had made one from his description before he made that for me, and frankly, this one works great. So I'm going to lay it in here and check how it coincides with the earlier mark that I made. Pretty much perfect. Not quite perfect, though. It's important to get this perfect because with this square fence, which is what this is called, you can slide up and down and go, you can span the knot holes. You don't have to worry about weighing. It, you can go right off the edge of the board, getting consistent marks. If you've got time to set this up, it's the way to go. So I'm coming in past the defects, and I'm going to start in. Not to bulge, I don't think I could, yeah, there we go.
Building a set of stairs is satisfying work. Think about it. You're manipulating numbers and geometry. You're problem solving and you're creating beauty and then voila, right at the end of it, you've got convenience. Your work became easier because now with the other carpentry, you've got a set of stairs. And stairs come in all levels of complexity and in pretty much every level of, what, architectural significance and beauty? They range from, you know, just a utilitarian set of boards in a barn to the most elaborate and beautiful things you've ever seen in nice houses. So if you're a carpenter, or if you want to be a carpenter, study up on stair building and get good at it because a good stair man has a pretty good chance and more than just one way to move up in the world. Thank you for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.